Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I'm going to show you guys how to set up a simple save system inside of Unity for your game so that we can save data to a file and load data for that file and bring it back into our game, or basically what we're doing is data serialization. So what we're going to serialize is going to be the position of this save me game object that is the Unity logo over here. You can see in the inspector, no scripts attached yet, but we will add one so that we can take the position of the transform and get it into the format we need it to be so that we can save that data to a file and then load it. So generally I would find it to be a good idea to use a manager class to handle saving and loading from a file, especially if your game is going to be complicated with many different game objects and settings that you need to save. But to get started with this simple example, we'll have it be a model behavior script that we attach to the save me object. So I'm going to create a new script here and I am going to call it uh, position saver. So this will create its own file for this particular game object and save the data of this transform to that. So let's go ahead and open this up, edit script. So inside of this position saver class, I'm gonna create a save method and a load method. So let's go ahead and declare those. So public void save and then public void load. I'm making these public so that in the future other game objects may be able to reference this script and call these functions. And I'm also going to create a, another class down here which is going to be serializable. So we can declare that with the serializable attribute which comes out of the system namespace. So private class position data uh, the reason we do this is that you can't really serialize a mono behavior directly um, out of the box at least because mono behavior has a lot of extra non-serializable stuff so we just want a class where everything can be serialized properly and then we'll serialize the data as a position data and load it as a position data where the mono behavior script will actually use that data so the position data is going to take a vector 3 and that is going to be public vector3 transform position. So in order to save the data, we have to first put it inside of our serializable class format. So I'm going to declare here position data, data equals new position data. Um, and then we'll say data dot transform position equals the transform position of the game object where this mono behavior is attached to and that's not a method it's just a property so we don't need the parentheses so uh, the idea here is that it's going to grab the game object that the script is attached to get its transform position and it's going to add that to the data then we can serialize that to a file. So there's different serializers for different data types you can use here, like JSON, XML, or binary serialization. Uh, and the idea is more or less the same. You pass in the object you want to save, you give it a target location or a file you want to write to, and uh, then you write it. And with load, it's kind of the reverse. You locate the file and then you load it, and then you pull the data out of that. So for this one, let's do an XML serializer because uh, XML is a very easy to read format. So you can look at it and see where your data is or isn't saving. So we'll call this XML serializer XML serializer and import the reference to system XML serialization. And let's create that as a new XML serializer. So in order to create this, we need to tell it what kind of XML serializer it is, which is going to be a type. And the type we want is the data type. So this is going to be position data. Next, we're going to need a file stream, which I will call file stream FS, which is going to basically tell the serializer what file we're writing to. So a new file stream, which is going to take a path here and a file mode. So for the file mode, we want it to be able to open or create, I believe, because if it's not already there, we want it to let itself create one. Um, the path is going to be something we're going to want to set up here. Now, uh, generally, if you're using a manager and you're saving and loading the game, you would do this all at once. So you'd have one mega serializable class, which contains all of the different game data that you're going to want to save to a single file. But here we're just writing one piece of data to one file. 
So just keep in mind that with a bigger project, you would almost certainly want one object to manage the saving and loading of your data and contain all of the data from all your different game objects in one thing. But for right now, let's set that path. So we'll call this path and the path. Uh, actually, we can make that a property. And the reason for that is that we want to get the application save path at load time. So application dot uh, this a temporary cache path which you could use if you uh, if you want to have some temporary files saving in the background as your game runs um, but there's also the permanent path which is the persistent data path so application dot persistent data path and then we can also append on here the file name so let's do a public string file name equals position saved i guess so we'll add that on here, plus the file name. And you may also want an extension. So we could say, declare here the extension as .xml. Okay, and we can add that in here. So this is gonna be the path to the persistent data folder plus file name plus extension. You can also add in some directory or folders there if you wanna get the full path. So I'll call this full save path. And we get rid of that semicolon and set that as the full save path for the file stream. And now that should resolve. Okay, so now that we have the file stream created, we need to serialize to that file stream with the data. So I'm going to say XML serializer dot serialize and we get the file stream there. Uh, you can see that it can take different types of streams. And the object that we're serializing is our data, which we created up there. So in five lines of code, we've basically created the save method. Uh, we may later on find that we want to do some checks like making sure that the file exists or if it doesn't exist, and then depending on if that's the case, change some things around. But this is the basic idea. You create a serializer, you give it a file stream, and then you serialize to that file stream with the data. And then the reverse is very similar. So uh, we're going to want to pull in <coughs> our position data and we might return it as uh, our return type instead of void here it depends if we want it to just be exclusively on this object or if we want to load the game or load the file and then return that data to other objects in our game so for right now though let's get a xml serializer and uh, well let's create it the same way just copy and pasting this from up here and then we need to get a file stream. We could call it read stream. Maybe that's a little bit more verbose. Uh, read stream equals new file stream. And we're going to get this from the full safe path. And let's say file mode dot open. Okay, and now we're going to want to deserialize the file. So uh, so we just need the stream here and that's going to give us the data type that is inside of the object okay so this deserialize method is going to return an object it's not actually sure what the data type is but we can cast it to our data type like this as position data so we will call this position data loaded data equals whatever gets returned from that so let's say now that we wanted to take the position that we saved and load it to our transform. So we can just do transform dot position equals loaded data dot transform position. So let me comment this out a bit loads. Okay, so now that we have this class created and commented out and everything, we can add it to our script. Uh, apparently I already did that though. So the position saver here, I think it's supposed to have a public variable. Let me check the console. Okay, uh, there it is. So the position, the file name is going to be position saved by default. Um, and this script would create one file for each script we have it attached to. So keep in mind uh, things like overwriting file names by accident. Um, when you're actually doing your full save system, get more complicated about it and definitely test things. But just for this simple example, what we could do now is say, add in a couple buttons, one that will do the saving and one that will do the loading of our position. So uh, let's do that. I'm going to create a UI button. And this UI button is going to be kind of in the bottom left of our interface. We will have the button text be save position. 
and this will be the save button. Okay, so uh, now for this on click event, we want to connect it to our game object over there. So I'm dragging the game object and we're going to reference the position saver script. So position saver dot save. And now we can duplicate this button, uh, move it to the bottom right hand corner, and we will make it do position saver dot uh, load and change the text of the button so that that's reflected there as well and we can rename the button so we have two buttons a save button and a load button so yeah that's looking pretty good so let's let's go ahead and hit play and uh, test this out so obviously there's no uh, move script on the object itself but we can manually change the position really easily so all i need to do here is click over here on the position x so in order to change the position manually, all we need to do is drag this position X over here. Then we'll hit save position. It may run into an error, but we'll see. Okay, uh, position saver position data is inaccessible due to protection level. Okay, so the reason we're getting that is that this class down here is not public. So I suspected that that might have been the case. Um, so all we really need to do here is change it from private to public and the serialization should work. I don't believe we need to take it out of the class. We can just leave it nested. But yeah, it, it, it does need to be public so that the serializer knows what type it's actually saving. So let's try this one more time. Okay, so let's move the position here. Hit save position. Okay, that's cool. Now let's move it over here and hit load position. Ooh, very nice. Okay, now let's save the position again and uh, then we can load that position Ooh, okay looks to be working pretty cool so one way we can take a look at our data and make sure everything's fine in the file aside from physically testing it in the game would be to actually go to its location on our computer so to find where unity saves data by default on the windows operating system we can go to percent at data percent and then you go back to app data local low and then before you set a company name for your game it's going to be a default company so we come in here and look for the project we're working on right now so this is inject test and then unity and to be honest i'm not 100 percent sure where it's actually saving from from this location so why don't we actually add in a debug line here so so for the script, we can say debug.log file saved to, and then we'll put in full save path here. And we can run and test this one more time and it will give us the location that we need. So save position here, it's app data local low default companies inject test uh, position saved. So it's a good thing that we actually did this test here because it looks like the directory is being combined with the file name here, which is technically fine. It's saving to a file named Zinject test, but it was supposed to be inside the Zinject test folder. So if we actually go take a look here at a default company, we can see our data is actually being saved here rather than inside the folder. That's not quite what we want. So um, we can go back up in here and add that slash to make sure that the directory is formed properly. Okay, let's test one more time. So, save position. Okay, looks proper now. Let's go check this inject test folder and we can see our file is here. So I'm gonna open it up with uh, Notepad++. Good tool for reading these kind of files. So inside of our position data, we can see the transform position has been serialized to the file. It's currently got the location 000 because and this current scene, that's where the object is. And this works fine because inside of Unity, vector threes are serializable out of the box. But note that complicated data types like a mono behavior game object are not serializable out of the box. So if you want to save data to a file, you need to break it down into a simpler data type like a serializable float rather than trying to serialize an entire game object to a file. So be careful about that. Um, now we'll do one more test here by moving the position. I'm going to move all the positions and then we'll hit save here. If I go back into Notepad++, it'll say that the data has been changed. We reload it and we can see our data has been saved there. So as far as actually saving and loading the data, that's all there really is to it. 
So from here, you could try different data types like JSON or binary, binary being unreadable to the human eye, but it does take up less data space. So if you really care about the efficiency, that might be the way to go. Uh, JSON is another very human readable data format type. So it's really up to you what you want to use for your game and which files you might have. So that's the basics of how you do serialization, saving and loading inside of Unity. Some things you might want to look into at this point would be um, creating a save load manager class, which can handle the saving and loading for everything inside of your scenes, rather than each individual component or each individual game object saving and loading for itself. And if you have to keep references to specific objects inside of your scene. For instance, if you can have like the position saver attached to five different objects, but they want to all be in one file, then you would want a way to uniquely identify those. Uh, GUIDs or GUIDs are a good idea for one way you could do that, basically giving a unique ID to every game object inside of your scene. But yeah, as far as basics go, hopefully this has helped some of you guys out. Thanks for watching and I will see you guys in my future Unity content.